in less than 48 hours. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, Goldman warns to get out before this happens, and it's coming in less than 48 hours. We'll show you what Goldman's concerned about and why you may want to heed their warning. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show. Black Box Stocks is back, and they just had a major announcement regarding their acquisition target. We think this is going to set up a 35% move to the upside in their stock. I'm going to show you a chart setup. The buyers have been coming in in a big way to support this, setting up a big upside potential. You can find them on the NASDAQ on the symbol BLBX. You can also stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. And this is why we like to look at the technicals, momentum, and machine positioning every Sunday to give you the edge you need to be a better trader and investor, not to mention Got a bunch of great setups for you today. Now let's head over to Goldman where we find out what is coming in less than 48 hours. And here you can see the S&P has been higher in 14 out of 15 weeks, as Goldman notes in their tactical flow of funds, their market structure update. And back since 1928, there has been only five other times this has happened. 1957, 58, 64, 72, with the last being 52 years ago, giving Goldman the 2020 vibes right now, suggesting that perhaps it's time for you to take some profits here and look look for a better entry point. Let's see what Goldman's making the case here because they're talking about the fabulous five here and these companies represent 26% of the S&P 500 market cap and this is the highest concentration on record. Period. That means if you're allocating one dollar of your investments to the SPY, 26 cents goes to the top five companies. And what's coming in less than 48 hours is NVIDIA reports. And they're asking, is this the most important stock in the world? Because they're reporting earnings on Wednesday and options are implying a 9.05% move. That means, of course, stock could go straight up even more, driving the major indices higher or well, if it disappoints, could send things crumbling down. Let's make the case of what Goldman's here concerned about in their 2020 vibes is because we go back, of course, post-pandemic, everybody wanted to pile into the equity market. Stocks were driving higher. And at a time where everyone believed that it could only just keep getting better, there was a big pullback in the market, not just once, the twice before it took off again. And what we're seeing here now is the potential case where investors are getting well ahead of earnings. This is causing a lot of money managers and investment banks to sound the alarm that maybe it's time to cut back some of your risk and look to re-enter at a better point. Because our base case remains that equities will end the year higher than current levels, but we do not expect it to be a straight path. This is from the chief economist for Europe at Jefferies International. We're looking for a bit of a pullback in the near term that which would provide better levels to reset long positions and that's what we're talking about here is that maybe it's time to take some profits put some money on the sidelines and wait for a re-entry point if nvidia misses expectations or maybe just doesn't have a big number like everyone's hoping well that would send a catalyst start the catalyst to send the major indices lower and markets have adjusted to the idea that rate cuts would come later and probably less important than was originally priced. This move upwards also really is driven by decent earnings growth that we've seen during the fourth quarter. And the challenge here, as we've noted on the show here in the past, just recently, that investors are front running what they believe are going to be fantastic earnings coming in the first quarter of this year. It just may not beat their expectations, setting up a repeat of what happened in late of 2020. But one thing that does at least provide some catalyst, a potential floor under the markets and buying in a dip scenario would be corporate demand. We see corporate repurchases of shares are now seeing the second largest pace on records with 166 billion in authorizations, mostly tilted toward large cap tech. Now keep in mind as prices go higher, even though this is the second largest authorization, as equity prices go higher, they get less purchasing power for their money. But what about the machines? Well, they're big players here too, except they already gone in a long time ago and they're maxed out. 
Here we see the systematic stuff is quite long and miles away from triggers or levels, but that will matter at some point because we haven't gotten close to trend and volatility triggers. In fact, there's only small selling here over the next week if in a flat tape, even in an up tape. And even as the market goes down, we're only seeing 29 billion in selling. This isn't a big deal. The reality is over the next month, the only red flag is if there's a big down move, sellers would unload 196 billion of global equities. The challenge here for the machines is we're not near those positions just yet. So everybody is long the market. And that's one thing it's important to understand when everybody is on one side the price tends to go to the other that's why goldman and you're seeing these other managers start to say hey you know what maybe it's okay to take some profits here let's take a look at our screens because here we have the s p 500 we've known momentum is very strong here the rsi is near overbought territory it's at 63 you see overbought being at 70 and higher magni's got a negative cross so it's starting to note the price is tilting to the downside momentum starting to slow but we look at our momentum timer pro with aggregates a bunch of those technical signals plus one of our proprietary ones that no one else is using and what do we know? It's got 22 consecutive daily buy signals. This is huge. We on the one month, then three month window, it's maxed out on the six month window. You're looking back six months of momentum and you see this thing is stretched very, very long to the upside. Of course, if you're looking to get an edge on your trading with our coupon codes for three people for a free month for both of our reports, check out the links in the description below, along with that of our sponsor, Black Box Stocks, again on the NASDAQ BLBS because what we have is we used our own reports on the show to put on a buy it open on November 3rd. That trade is now at 15.32%. You'll notice I kept the stop loss level the same before because it's important. One thing retail investors don't do is hold on to their gains. We want to encourage you continue to raise your stop loss levels. If we see a pullback here, this will stop you out, put some money in your bank, and then you can turn around and look for the next step. Use the reports again to find that trade back in because we note the machines are long but who told you to get in long before the machines were actually doing it that's right our cta timer pro on our fast and slow algorithm here we told you when to buy this a long time ago let's take a look at of course the chart for the s p and we give you the edge because we run a historical overlay the actual machines don't trade with historical overlay at all again links to the description in the comment below or in the description below let's see this things breaking out and you go back to 2020 this is a concern here the market is rallying all of a sudden everybody got way ahead of things there was one pullback and two pullback that would tell us that a potential pull all the way down here around the 100 day moving average or back into the supply zone would be a big case but base case scenario a shallower one would be a pullback here into this 470 range so again opportunity potentially knocking here if you take some profits and put some money back into your account instead of writing things down and the same is true for the qqq we look at momentum being positive here or a size of 58 so we're seeing this to slow down here a little bit momentum the macd the moving average convergence divergence got a negative cross our own momentum time pro again fairly maxed out here just like the s p 29 consecutive daily buy signals maxed out on the one month and the three month window and it's been that way momentum is extreme here but so too was the gains we put on this trade 18.84 percent stop loss level at 424.57 again the whole point of using stop losses is to control your risk and when you're up to keep some money in your account that's the goal here so if we see a pullback and we get stopped out that would be fine because then we'll look to reset in at a lower level uh, let's talk about the upside target well that's well anybody's guess downside target at 4.1205 same story here with the chart if you're looking for better opportunities things you don't want to be buying all the way at the all-time high well we've got a bunch of those trades coming up for you here so we see a full back here potentially into the 412 you could see a deeper pullback here around into the high 390 zone if there is a larger move the big move would be all the way back down into the supply zone and that would be the case where you're seeing investors way way ahead of where companies see their earnings going that easily can happen particularly in a market like this that's driven purely 
by momentum. How about trade? We're pretty excited about this is the China large cap FXI. Momentum turned positive. It's been this way for now. We have RSI at 55. That's your relative strength indicator. Magni's got a positive cross. Momentum time pros, 10 consecutive daily buy signals. Again, we used our own reports to put this trade back on January 29th. It's now up 2.26%. And when we look at a chart on this, the upside potential on this one is far bigger than the major U.S. equity indices. Last time FXI was down at this level, in three months it rallied 50%. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to do that again. It just means we have a lot more upside potential than buying something at the top. Here we can see our machine positioning now long on our fast algorithm and buying up. This is from the Saturday report. Along with a video we put out to all our subscribers, again, you could jump in on that. Three coupons for a free month. Links in the description. And our slow algorithm, this is where more money's traded. It's trailing behind that's to be expected we're raising the stop loss level up here again we want to see this thing hold on some gains friday's closing at 2307 that's how we're looking at fxi here and what can now we got to zoom back in because we look back and we know this was a 53 percent move now even if that doesn't happen there's plenty of upside potential here mainly because what do you see out of Beijing? They're coming in, putting support under their market. And here we have the market turned around, hit a bottom, and then rallied up. So you have now a higher high set here, and then another one, and then a gap up on Friday. This thing looking to break out. The, the bigger move here we're seeing is up into this potential volume profile line over the last six months at 26.16. You notice momentum's really building here. It's coming, popping out of the supply zone if it does, and there's your next move up here into the $25 range. Lots of potential in this one if you haven't jumped on that one yet. How about Hong Kong? This was a pair trade we did with FXI, EWH. We jumped in on this also on January 29th, up 0.62%. We feel there's a lot of upside potential in this one as well. Now that we are in the, we haven't didn't raise a stop loss level up because it's just too tight next to our buy price. But let's take a look at EWH here and see where the potential is. We see a similar story, except a move up to roughly 16 96 at volume profile that puts in a nice bit of a trade there this is something that as it rallied i'd convert that stop loss either by raising it up or flipping it over into a trailing stop and that way again whenever you have some gains you want to try to hold on to as much of them as possible and in trading if you see an initial an early loss cut your losses look for something else now every trade is going to come out a winner the key is to get rid of those losers quick Let's talk about something that's reverse position. That's the bond market here recently. And this is a trade we put on without a stop loss because a lot of people don't use them. We want to encourage you and then show you what to do if you do that and you find yourself going the wrong direction. We know over 112.60 to buy on the 10-year treasury under 109.10 to sell. The Friday's closing at 109.81. So right now the machines, what we note from the reports that I've seen is a lot of them have moved back near extreme short positions again this is setting up upside potential now you remember last week said we probably weren't going to add to this position well that's going to change here let's take a look at why i might have that change in view it's because our cta time pro now is at max at 55 percent short on our fast algorithm 55 percent short on our slow if it gets down to minus 100 minus 100 you bet you want to look to add even if it just holds here and flips because what do we see? Momentum clearly to the downside here. Seven consecutive daily sell signals. We're only down 3.56% on this trade. There's a potential here for a lot of upside as the RSI is at 41. Magni's got a negative cross. Let's take a deeper look here and see what's going on with TLT because what we can note is that there's that volume profile line that didn't hold because of that CPI report and then try to bounce up, found some sellers there and you've seen some push here, but notably the 100 day moving average is starting to come here underneath. That's the blue line and form a level of support. You can see momentum slowed down here, but it didn't actually get down into oversold territory. MACD's kind of suggesting there could be a flip here to the up side if this starts to rally up you want to jump on that trade and we're going to note it on our reports that we're going to follow through with that as well with a move up here to this 100 
dot spot 21 level is the next upside target that upper end of that supply zone that's where we want to see this go now let's take a look at some other potential trades how about gold now we're not talking about the stuff you have in your safe at home we're talking about trading gold momentum's negative i don't really see an opportunity here we've got six consecutive daily sell signals there's other opportunities on this we hit our downside target we revise that now down to the 200 day moving average machine position just isn't anything exciting to give us any sort of green light that, to jump on this when there's other opportunity. And here we can see GLD. Let's go to the one-year chart. It just came down, hit that volume profile line on the one-year, bounced up. And unless there's a big follow-through here, again, you have one, two, three, four top quad top scenario. So something I want to chase for a breakout. Not necessarily. I still think there's other opportunities. Let's take a look at some of those. How about GDX? Well, this is a trade we held on to and did not get stopped out of but notably we see some buying coming up off of its short position on our cta timer pro report this was noted to our subscribers in our updated version we're at a sell max on our momentum timer pro report if you see a flip here it says take position on an mtp flip to buy on the daily so keep that in mind this is a great potential trade setup coming off a deep move lower and that's what happens sometimes our reports will catch these initial moves sometimes they break out sometimes they go down that's why you use stop losses to control your risk but look at the setup here go back to the two-year chart and you can see buyers and support levels all the way down here this is a potential nice setup look for momentum time pro to flip jump on that trade your move then to 29.53 is your target there on gdx but that's not the only one silver now we got stopped out but notably some people in the comments said that they held their position looking at the charts right now now we're not going to take a position off for what we're looking at but here's something for you take a small position set the stop loss below the volume profile line and again this is just the fact that we got stopped out on this trade but this is when i still think there's opportunity why because we got stopped out down here and some of you had didn't use stop losses it's okay and then price rallied up and now it's sitting above this volume profile line i would set my stop loss right beneath there and take a small position not a big chunk of portfolio just maybe half the size of your normal trade and try to pick up a move up here to 2208 this could be a nice trade uh, for you as well so again giving you some subs here how about another one palladium we know momentum is positive this one we got stopped out of well as well but this one is setting up an opportunity there's another one that's even better than this and that we showed our subscribers in our video over the weekend but look at this wait to buy due to selling to the volume profile line so we have all the signals we wanted but look at this let's go to palladium here and i'll show you what the issue is it ran right into this volume profile line so at this point i would hold off in this trade if it pulls back again then i would look to maybe perhaps get ready to enter a long position have that on my watch list otherwise if it breaks the volume profile line then i'm looking upside potential up here around 112 one somewhere in the 111 range but right now until those sellers are done here i would stay away from palladium but i keep it on your watch list for sure how about dba this thing turned out to be a nice little trade up 3.48 percent 22 consecutive daily buy signals maxed out on the one month window again using our reports we see the machines would be long this but what's happened is prices pulled back so we bumped our stop loss level up we want to hold on to some of these gains here but i still like the potential in dba particularly as the dollar looks to maybe be changing direction soon and why do i like dba here well for one reason it's pulling back right down into the supply zone and what have we seen in the past when it gets down here it rallies up that means setting up a catalyst you want to be looking at selling right up here around this 2240 level if it breaks out up there not unusual in a rally in price for it to pull back a little bit form that bear flag pattern take off again so you see this happening one more time but if it gets up here to 2240 put that on your sell list and but we got our stop loss bumped up a little bit here's another potential opportunity now we got stopped out of this trade for a small loss at 3.25 percent but let's take a look at soybeans because it's got 12 consecutive daily sell signals but one thing on our cta report you got max short across the board here and what's really great about this is we tell you when these signals flip now we make it so easy to use our reports let's take a look and see why we're interested in soybeans on a potential flip here and there's some other ones 
ones that we showed our subscribers. We didn't, we're not putting them in our report here today. But look, a one, two, there's your triple bottom. As price holds here and we see our signals flip, that is an opportunity. Put that on your list because we're putting it on ours for sure. And something else that you might want to add to your list is that is the stock for our sponsor for today's show. That's Black Box Stocks. Again, you can find them on the NASDAQ under the symbol BLBX because they just had a big announcement about their acquisition partner and you can see some incredible moves in their chart. We talk about momentum building and price breakout. Here's one I think can move 35%. Let's make the case for black box stocks here because what happened is they their acquisition target EV Tech Aluminum received a new 67 million long-term supply contract from Jaguar Land Rover. That is their biggest partner and this adds to their existing order book. This is huge. 780 million. So this company has revenue, has contracts. This is fantastic. This is exactly what you want to see because they just announced that its planned acquisition target EV Tech Aluminum has been awarded a long-term contract from Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, previously, that was Jaguar Land Rover now JLR to supply parts for a new line of electric vehicles as a world-class manufacturer of lightweight aluminum parts for the EV luxury and performance automotive market. EV Tech has been designated as the single new single source supplier for key components in the EV powertrain for the new line of electric vehicles introduced by Jaguar in 2025. Again, this is supposed to add 67 million in new sales over the contract period. This is going to be a fantastic opportunity to get into their stock. Let's take a look at what Black Box CEO Gus Kepler had to say. As he said, we're pleased about the growing order book at EV Tech as we work together to complete our merger. We continue to believe that this merger will provide significant value value to our shareholders as we enhance and grow our fintech operations and black box in parallel with this new business combination, something that we see. Now we're gonna take a look at the charts here in a moment, and this is an incredible setup. You're gonna to love to see buyers are supporting this, and that's what you wanna look for the next move, because EV Tech, keep in mind, they're recognized as one of the world's leading advanced aluminum castings and machine manufacturers supplying premium brand OEM makers. We think there's a lot more coming for this company. Keep in mind that Jaguar Land Rover is their largest customer and we're betting they're gonna get a whole bunch more. And analysts believe that their stock could go up as much as 140% from where it is today. We're gonna to make the case for the first 35% move. This was up from NASDAQ.com. But let's take a look at the chart setup because here we see the announcement. The market initially sold down and what happened? Buyers came in and put a big support underneath this stock. You see a massive amount of shares trading. You know, we were featured on the show at that time as well. Just following that, we see again, market again look at these candlesticks you see these big wicks what is this buyers coming in and you see the volume pop up and now the volume starting to sell what is that an indicator of my friends is that means the sellers are getting worked out here and that is setting up the next move to break through to the first supply zone and then 35 percent move would be all the way up here to the second one you can see the last time the sellers were worked out of here the stock took off we zoom into the 90 day level you can see very clearly all of this support is being held very nicely you want to keep your stop loss level down here just a little bit below and look for that 35 percent move to the upside with black box stocks now as always with any company we feature on our show there are no obligation to purchase their stock be sure to do your own research before placing any trades and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now